about to start is, is still true. Right, man. So... Uh, yeah, this one's a bit weird, maybe. So, a walking sim, I believe. And uh, it has, uh, I think it has some tidbits about the old, the story as well on top of it. So let's give it a go. Let's actually have a look at trivia, see what that is. Let's look at this shit first. All right. Oh. Start. <laughs> you will not find difficult choices, action sequences, or inventory management here. The movement is limited, progressing through locations along with the plot. So it's basically just a telling of a story. I'm fine with that. I am writing this under an appreciable mental strain, since by tonight I shall be no more. Ah uh, yes, Lovecraft and racism. We can never mention the man without bringing that up immediately. Hmm. Round thing continues journey. Thingy does facts about the thing. Fun fact, on Steam, this this says that... It comes out tomorrow, I think. It says it both runs where... It requires a controller to play. It can You can do both VR and non-VR. Obviously, we're doing non-VR, and I'm using a mouse and keyboard. And it plays fine, so who, who knows? Oh, hidden trivia. Focus your eyes and look for the elder sign. Interesting. Where's my elder sign? That's a trivia. That's not an elder sign. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Educational, Alicia. Is the chat dead on the fucking screen? I think the chat's dead on the screen. Uh, Twitch. No, it's there. Weird. Alright, Haskell Flaskell. Another one, of course. No additional Elder Snigel. Penniless, and at the end of my supply of the drug which alone makes life endurable, I can bear the torture no longer, and shall cast myself from this garret window into the squalid street below. We Do not think from my slavery to morphine that I am a weakling or a degenerate. When you have read these hastily scrawled pages, you may guess. Though never fully realize why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. Not sure why that was that way, but. Elderly Lord. We literally just started. 
The man was especially racist, Komodo. He mellowed out in later years, but people never... never bother with that. Morphium. It was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific that the packet of which I was supercargo fell a victim to the German Sea Raider. He got better in later years, but I, I tire of this conversation every goddamn time anything about him comes up. Uh, it's it's us. Jeez, HP. The Great War was then at its very beginning, and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation. So that our vessel was made a legitimate prize, whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. Lovecraft, oh, for fuck's sake, I have to get into this. He was very racist, very, very racist. He got better in later years, but people don't care about that. And it's irritating because he wrote a bunch of fine shit. Uh, but every time any of it is talked about, it immediately derails from the mythos and the stories and the world he made directly into he was a racist. And it's, it's so annoying every fucking time. <sighs> fucking lasso nomad. Say a lot. It's very pretty, this. So liberal, indeed, was the discipline of our captors that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone in a small boat with water and provisions for a good length of time. The Dagon story is about what 20 pages or something if that but i think i think this is fine i mean this is fine it's a bunch of trivia about stuff and an ass of a thing which is neat i don't mind got any elderly signs here no
When I finally found myself adrift and free, I had but little idea of my surroundings. And it's also a potential VR game. Never a competent navigator. I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Of the longitude, I knew nothing, and no island or coastline was in sight. Nothing appeared. The weather kept fair. And for uncounted days, I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some the days, passing ship idiots. or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. I keep... my brain keeps wanting to eye of Argon the dialogue. Wait, what? <laughs> if I go all the way around quickly, it, sometimes it's it snaps back. Yeah. <laughs> if it's been too quickly, it snaps back. Otherwise, he gets his neck stuck here. Oh, I see you there. It's like fucking Grigner getting uh getting uh in dungeons, and he immediately just has a mental breakdown after five minutes in a cell. I remember that one. Fuck. But neither ship nor land appeared, and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. I just realized it isn't all caps. The font just looks like that. The change happened whilst I slept. Its details I shall never know. For my slumber, though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. <laughs> like at the fuck out of his content. Any elderly signs? No. When at last I awoke. It was to discover myself half sucked into a slimy expanse of Look hellish black swiveling. mire, which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see. Monotonous undulations, the most boring undulations of all. And in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. Though one might well imagine that my first sensation would be of wonder, at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery, I was in reality more horrified than astonished. Yeah, tentacles normally don't function that well above water. For there was in the air, and in the rotting soil, a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. This sort of shit, I can tell you from the DK experience, stinks. Rotten sea shit stinks. I've had the misfortune of having to tr trundle around in some of this, and it's not the best. The region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish, and of other less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending Hey, plane. look, a lob knight. <laughs> 
That that is the equivalent of a squid uh, octopus mooning over there. That's because you haven't you haven't been inside a power plant's coolant system on a hot summer day stuck in this shit pond. It is vile. Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. There was nothing within hearing and nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed oh, look, me with a nauseating fear. Was that just a horseshoe crab? And a fucking flounder. <laughs> I like that the fucking flounder's just there. Yeah, so I had to clean the... Uh, there's this power plant here that uh, takes its cooling water in from a fjord. And that shit gets clogged. And this was, this was uh, like two, two weeks, a year or something, the power plant gets shut down to be cleaned. And I had to go into that coolant thing and blow dead sea shit out of the little holes and into this like waist high uh, sort of slurry of, of dead sea shit. And it was so warm in there. Is that a trilobite? I thought the trilobite was the round ass. Fuck. I identify in advance. Goddamn pill bug. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, as though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. How oh, do they? No clumpfisk. Need some help. Roly-poly fish head. A novel about unnatural affinities between a hybrid idiot and the strange fish of an isolated lake. What the fuck? Jesus HP. What did you like? It would be nice if there was an elder sign on this going, this is a this is a floundy flat fisk. I think he liked the idea of England. As I crawled into the stranded boat, I realized that only one theory could explain my position. Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. This man is still wiggly. I feel like there would be sort of more, like, miasma shit rising from the, uh, this sort of crap, instead of just foggy. So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me, that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, straining my ears as I might. Nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. <laughs> Fisk is all like, how? Sneaky Elder Snigel. Yeah, I saw this in uh, the Superman. Yeah, Lovecraft was basically a very neurotic, ustless man that read about things and then th they scared him.
For several hours, I sat thinking or brooding in the boat, which lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. Got that. As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. That night I slept but little, and the next day I made for myself a pack containing food and water, preparatory to an overland journey in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. Help me. I'm so fisk and clumpy. Look at this wiggler. On the third morning, I found the soil dry enough to walk on the with long ease. squids. The odor of the fish was maddening, but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil and set out boldly for an unknown goal. <laughs> They put the flat fisk flatways in the water there, and you can just tell that it hasn't been modeled properly from below. It's just completely flat. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's like it was in the, uh, on the ground just drying, and then someone fucking discoursed it, and it landed in the, in the <laughs> fucking slop like that. Yeah, you can make uh, slop shoes. All day I forged steadily westward, guided by a faraway hummock which rose higher than any other elevation on the rolling hummock. desert. Cry mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to bog and my frames will tank. Yes, Kira. When shall my elderly signs? Ah, uh, the Welsh. Hmm? Could I, you? That night, I encamped, and on the following day still travelled toward the hummock, though that object seemed scarcely nearer than when I had first espied it. He'd probably be all like, big fucking rowboat, and then leave it at that, on account of having no interest. Aha. Uh -huh. The question is if he was alone in that belief. It's written as if he's just like, no. <laughs> yeah. Because of a dream he had when he was a kid about, uh, I don't know, a pencil sharpener or something. Very fine. Fun fact, educational, a lot of his shit, including Cthulhu, had wings because Mage 4, uh, early space was composed of ether back then, so to space travel you'd need wings. It's true. Itsy bitsy wings. You wouldn't need bigger, provided they knew you were, you'd be weightless up there. By the fourth evening, I attained the base of the mound, yeah, no which turned out to be much higher than it had appeared from a distance. An intervening valley setting it out in sharper relief from the general surface. 
Too weary to ascend, I slept in the shadow of the hill. I know not why my dreams were so wild that night, but ere the waning and fantastically gibbous moon had risen far above the eastern plain. I was awake in a cold perspiration, determined to sleep no more. Good man, Bond. Such visions as I had experienced were too much for me to endure again. And in the glow of the moon, I saw how unwise I had been to travel by day. Without the glare of the parching sun, my journey would have cost me less energy. Indeed, I now felt quite able to perform the ascent which had deterred me at sunset. Picking up my pack, I started for the crest of the eminence. Oh, fucking boy. God damn. Fucking throwing the facts at us. God damn it. Sounds like he uh got the old deep P. I have said that the unbroken monotony of the rolling plane was a source of vague horror to me. Not sure, Pond. Then he'd just have invited them in if he was afraid of the falling upwards. But I think my horror was greater when I gained the summit of the mound and looked down the other side into an immeasurable pit or canyon. Sounds more like he got depressed. Whose black recesses the moon had not yet soared high enough to illumine. I felt myself on the edge of the world, peering over the rim into a fathomless chaos of eternal night. Through my terror ran curious reminiscences of Paradise Lost and of Satan's hideous climb through the unfashioned realms of darkness. Well, As the moon climbed higher in the sky, I began to see that the slopes of the valley were not quite so perpendicular as I had imagined. No ugly. Ledges and outcroppings of rock afforded fairly easy footholds for a descent. I or Whilst after a drop of only a few hundred feet, the declivity became very gradual. Any elderly signs? Urged on by an impulse which I cannot definitely analyze, I scrambled with difficulty down the rocks and stood on the gentler slope beneath, gazing into the Stygian deeps where no light had yet penetrated. All at once, my attention was captured by a vast and singular object on the opposite slope, which rose steeply about a hundred yards ahead of me. An object that gleamed whitely in the newly bestowed rays of the ascending moon. I mean, there'd be two reasons to go up a mountain in something like that. First of all, to actually be able to see for a distance if what direction you might have to go in to get out of there. And if shit floods again, being up high is probably better. Or even better to be by the boat, I suppose. Is that a sneaky elder sign? I think it might be. Maybe not.
that it was merely a gigantic piece of stone, I soon assured myself. But I was conscious of a distinct impression that its contour and position were not altogether the work of nature. A closer scrutiny filled me with sensations I cannot express. Okay, semicolon. For despite its enormous magnitude, and its position in an abyss which had yawned at the bottom of the sea since the world was young, I perceived beyond a doubt that the strange object was a well-shaped monolith, whose massive bulk had known the workmanship and perhaps the worship of living and thinking creatures. Dazed and frightened, yet not without a certain thrill of the scientist's or archaeologist's delight, I examined my surroundings more closely. Thus it played. The moon, now near the zenith, shone weirdly and vividly above the towering steeps that hemmed in the chasm and revealed the fact that a far-flung body of water flowed at the bottom, winding out of sight in both directions and almost lapping my feet as I stood on the slope. Across the chasm, the wavelets washed the base of the Cyclopean monolith, on whose surface I could now trace both inscriptions and crude sculptures. No Elder Sneagle. The writing was in a system of hieroglyphics unknown to me and unlike anything I'd ever seen in books. Actual just paintings of things. Consisting for the most part of conventionalized aquatic symbols such as fishes, eels, octopi, crustaceans, mollusks, whales and the like. Several characters obviously represented marine things which are unknown to the modern world, but whose decomposing forms I had observed on the ocean-risen plain. It was the pictorial carving, however, that did most to hold me spellbound. There was undulation earlier, or no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh damn, oh no, that fucked up the chat for a second. Plainly visible across the intervening water, on account of their enormous size, were an array of bas-reliefs whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Dore. Is it bas or bar reliefs? I think June says bar. I think that these things were supposed to depict men, at least a certain sort of men. Though the creatures were shown disporting like fishes in the waters of some marine grotto. Or paying homage at some monolithic shrine which appeared to be under the waves as well. Of their faces and forms I dare not speak in detail. They're just looking at a monolith that has on it painted them looking at a monolith. For the mere remembrance makes me grow faint. Grotesque beyond the imagination of a Poe or a Bulwer. They were damnably human in general outline, despite webbed hands and feet, shockingly wide and flabby lips, glassy, bulging eyes, and other features less pleasant to recall. Curiously enough, they seemed to have been chiseled badly out of proportion with their scenic background. For one of the creatures was shown in the act of killing a whale, represented as but little larger than himself. 
I remarked, as I say, their grotesqueness and strange size, but in a moment decided that they were merely the imaginary gods of some primitive fishing or seafaring tribe. Some tribe whose last descendant had perished eras before the first ancestor of the Piltdown or Neanderthal man was born. This guy's cave paintings are pretty good for a man such as us. Awestruck at this unexpected glimpse into a past beyond the conception of the most daring anthropologist, I stood musing whilst the moon cast queer reflections on the silent channel before me. Then, suddenly, I saw it. With only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface, the thing slid into view above the dark waters. Like and loathsome, it darted like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith. Slight churning. About which it flung its gigantic scaly arms, the while it bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. Dumbledore said calmly. Then. Of my frantic ascent of the slope and cliff, and of my delirious journey back to the stranded boat, I remember little. You could have hung out with Dagon. Instead, you fucking flee. We went back up the mountain instead of around it, god damn. I believe I sang a great deal and laughed oddly when I was unable to sing. Peku Lord. of the shadows, I was in the San Francisco hospital. Brought thither by the captain of the American ship which had picked up my boat in mid-ocean. In my delirium, I had said much, but found that my words had been given scant attention. Of any land upheaval in the Pacific, my rescuers knew nothing. Nor did I deem it necessary to insist upon a thing which I knew they could not believe.
Y'all dumb. <laughs> Them? No. I don't think they voiced it. Any more sneaky elderly signs? Nay. I unadmit myself. Once I sought out a celebrated ethnologist and amused him with peculiar questions regarding the ancient Philistine legend of Dagon, the fish god. Fucking grain man. Fiskyard. Scan Lord. Huh? <laughs> but soon perceiving that he was hopelessly conventional. I did not press my inquiries. The casual hardback Necronomicon. Bastard. Oh, it snapped me around again. Huh. Ah, fucking.
I want to start you and I want it scowling at me. Why would I go over here if there isn't any anything to click? That was sneaky. Was that even there? Maybe it was one of the things. Hold on. Hmm. It is at night, especially when the moon is gibbous and waning, that I see the thing. I tried morphine, but the drug has given only transient surcease and has drawn me into its clutches as a hopeless slave. So now I am to end it all, having written a full account for the information or the contemptuous amusement of my fellow <laughs> men. Man, Lovecraft. Ah, there. It's Alicia, it's uh, older, educational there. I thought I was going out the window. Often, I ask myself if it could not all have been a pure phantasm. A mere freak of fever. Oops. This I ask myself, but ever does there come before me a hideously vivid vision in reply. I cannot think of the deep sea without shuddering at the nameless things that may at this very moment be crawling and floundering on its slimy bed, worshipping their ancient stone idols and carving their own detestable likenesses on submarine obelisks of water-soaked granite. I dream of a day when they may rise above <laughs> the billows to drag down into their reeking talons the remnants of puny, war-exhausted mankind. Of a day when the land shall sink and the dark ocean shall ascend amidst universal pandemonium. Oh, fisky men are coming. It's the Statue of Liberace. They're getting it. Oh, no. I 
thought we were going out the window. It shall not find me. He's <laughs> bending the door. I think you have morphine a bit too much. God, that hand. The window, the window. It should have come in through the window. If it was Satan, it would have come in through the window. Not much of a rush, are we? soliciting <laughs> ah. <laughs> that was that Got all of them. Fucking score. That was alright. Uh, I'm not sure if it's free or not. There's a demo. Comes out tomorrow. Oh well. Now it is time for Bat Chow. Time for watching, I will be right back.